from all over and um, you know getting to know people online and then getting to meet them in person or vice versa uh, is, I mean you're just so close you brought so close by sort of being in people's lives on a daily basis and then you get together and you get to eat with them and dance with them and talk with them and you know it's like you know the details of each other's lives and uh, I don't know. I feel like it's almost a huge support group I have. I don't know anybody in the herd. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, the the herd is it's almost like a generic term. Like there's nothing that you have to do to be part of it, other than have a desire to be surround yourself with like-minded individuals. All you have to do is like love Don the Buffalo, and you know there's there's not a ticket you get or. You know, or anything. You just have to be like, you know, introduce yourself to whoever you might have seen online or at the last show, or I don't know. It's it's a good thing though, that's for sure. I'm part of it. <laughs> so. The herd kind of refers to any Don the Buffalo fan. <coughs> Maybe you really think of it as the organized sort of herd, the the people who get together because they are fans of Don the Buffalo and. Uh, what I remember is that um, Tim Anderson started the email list. And when that happened, uh, you know, a few people got on it. And then the first herd event that I remember being or organized was happened before the New Year's show in Florida of 1999-2000. And uh, John Lockwood invited everyone to come to his room at the Days Inn. And a bunch of us showed up and met each other, and it just kind of snowballed from there. As as more people joined the herd list, we had more events, and uh, then there was the first herd buffet, which was at Donnaroo in 2002, and Robbie brought barbecue, and we had a potluck, and that and from then we planned more of those events because that was so much fun, and so successful. To, it was a good way to get together with people we'd seen at some met at so many shows, and and then to meet other people who we hadn't met. So that's kind of like the way it happened, and, and had a life of its own now. It seems like it started out as a party, and then evolved uh, into a little more than that. And it's uh, it's a great thing. It's really, really great. Right there. Yeah. The herd has just been a family and opened their arms and their hearts and their homes and their love to us and helped bring us through some very difficult times. And 
a family you always search for. It's kind of like the people you choose to spend time with versus the people you have to spend time with, like bosses, landlords, and that kind of thing. Well, I've, I've been a member of the herd since the early days, since the early days of grassroots. You know, I live up kind of in the Finger Lakes area a little bit south of Rochester, a little bit west of Ithaca. I think the herd is a group of people that like to gather at festivals, listen to music, and have a good time. There is so much herd that is not on any sort of formal thing. And we had a we had a conversation once about like who is the biggest Don of the Buffalo fan? And you know, we're all Don of the Buffalo fans, but in a way, I I don't think I was ever in a certain respect, I was never as big of a Don of the Buffalo fan as I was that very first moment I heard him. I went down there I, I was smiling. I didn't. I didn't have any preconceived notions about anything, and I was able to just roll with it. And you know, I I feel like herd is uh, whoever they say they are, and I don't think you have to be in any certain group to be herd. And uh, it's interesting because I know a lot of herd, but at the same time, there's tons of herd I don't know. You know, the buffalo roamed all the plains, and. There were a lot of different herds, but they were all buffalo, you know, and uh, we're all in this together. I hope the band keeps rolling and I hope the herd keeps rolling. Um. It was uh, actually it was Big Cosmo Sunshine Daydream Weekend, which down at Swanee, which uh, the next year became Magfest. But uh, Jerry had died, and uh, like, gosh, about a year and a half before, and all my friends and I were just looking for something to do. And a friend of mine in Florida called me up and said, "Hey, there's this festival in Northern Florida, and they got like Grisman and Merle Saunders." And so, sure, went down, and uh, I was taping on the main stage. And this guy comes over and he goes, did you see the dance tent? And I go, no, I've been here all day. He goes, these hippies in this funky old bus from New York came in and they tore it up. <laughs> so, so they were playing, uh, I'm not sure if it was later that night or the next night, but it, there was quite a buzz around the festival. Was, you know, you got to see Donna the Buffalo. So went, uh, got all set up at the main stage and sure enough, they came out and they, the first song they went into was off to Dreamland. And <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. So that's how I found them. Oh. They played at a street festival in Eugene uh, in 2003, and uh, it blew us away. And then the week after that, we were signed up to go see them in Key West for like five days. <laughs> so I guess that's the beginning with us. But part of it was the herd list, because there's a mailing list, and people just were like so friendly to us. It's like... Especially back when the list was... When we first were introduced to Donna, the list was... Uh, more important than there's so many other options out right now, you know, and people are drifting away to different media. But back then, the list was particularly powerful. So I decided to throw that in. We didn't know about the herd um, for about a year after uh, seeing the band for the first time. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, how are you going to know? Yeah, even, we didn't know there was any group. You know, we didn't know there was a group. I mean, it's, we see lots of music, and, um, and, and so we didn't didn't put it together until we were talking to enough people that, that yeah there's this list and there's this group that you know follows this band and I think you know that's that's how we 
found. You no, know, I think at the first, when we went to that brew glass up in. Um, was that oh, West the brew Virginia? glass thing with John Klein yeah. and the, when yeah. We yeah. went to the, the brew glass right. festival You're, in West Virginia, and I was on the list by that time. And somebody said there's going to be uh, a group a up there. Dinner. Actually, it was like a, a herd potluck thing. dinner or meal. At, so we were tipped the off. Show and after we were the tipped show. off to look for the herd, so and we said that we, when, when we were looking for a place to camp. We said, we have to camp where maybe this herd is, and uh, then we'll look for them. Yeah. We'll try to find some of them. And then we found they were on. everywhere. And they were like all over, right? Hey, so you know, the first people we, 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 first people we pitched the tent next to, we said, yeah, where's the herd people? They're, and, oh, right over there. Right over there, that's them. And, uh, yeah, of course, they're all hanging out, and they're doing a big old dinner, you know, and cooking like a big old spaghetti thing there. And it was Terra Alta where it was freezing cold in June. It was West Virginia at about 5,000 feet or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Alpine, it was Alpine climb. I think Dal, and Dal was the first person that ever wrote to me when I got on yeah. the list. I don't remember what I wrote the first time, but Dal was the first one to respond to me. And we became good friends. It took, it was a while before we met. But I don't remember, I think she was probably one of the first people that I met in person having corresponded online. Uh, and, and going back to a, an example of, of how the people are in a group, you ask, ask that and it finally it hit me the perfect example. We had flown to uh, Florida and David Grace, who we'd never met, called us and asked us to give give us a ride from the airport yeah, and yeah, we, we, didn't, we, we never even met the, the guy we were going on the cruise and he, was, and he wasn't he even, wasn't going, even on going on the cruise but he was, but he was for the down New there show. for the, uh, another and show he, and he said I'll pick you up at the airport I'll have a, my shirt hanging out of the and we were like window. what the heck what's what's going who's on with it? Who, I mean who is this guy you know I mean he wants to help us out I mean this total stranger well that's sort of how it is that's sort of how it is. It's, <laughs> and every, it's the way it should be. It's and, the way and, the world should be. And every but show we we've gone to, every uh, festival we've gone to, has just been more of the same. And people are just willing to do anything for you. And we're willing to do anything too. Almost anything. Almost anything. <laughs> <laughs> if we have it, we'll share it. <laughs> if we have it, we'll share it, right. <laughs> I first saw Donna the first full year that we did the Sugar Shack um, and it was at All Good Festival in Spotsylvania, Virginia, May 17th or 18th of 2001 and the Sugar Shack wasn't quite as busy then. So we were up there, it was early afternoon and all of a sudden I heard this music coming down from the stage and I was like, you guys I'm going to go check this band out real quick and so I ran down there and and I got about halfway and I started like moving a little bit and I got a little bit further and next thing I know I'm right on, on, the, on the wall there, right at the rail they call it. And uh, I'm just like, da, 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 and I'm smiling and I'm getting into it. And I look around me and everyone else is too. They're smiling and then they, they ended the song, they getting ready to do the next song and this guy next to me, I said, who is this? What's the deal with these guys? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I don't know, but I've been seeing him as often as I can ever since I first saw him three years ago or whatever he said. And first time I saw Down the Buffalo was the Harvest Moon Festival in 1994, which was, was difficult. It would humble most people to never, ever really do that. But I had done it and I knew it was pretty bad. It was cold and wet. Thanks for the tip. They're all Can't really say that I enjoyed them there. Wow. I still didn't quite get it. I thought they were good, but I liked them. I remember it being the first. The first time I really got it, they played in, a, in Pittsburgh at a venue called Graffiti. Um, one of my favorite places at the time. That night I got it, and I think the thing that struck me, and this brings you back to your question, um, I'm always struck when I go and I see a crowd that does something that I'm not used to seeing. And one of the things that the crowd did for Don the Buffalo that I wasn't used to seeing was that everybody, literally everybody, when the band came out, got up. And if they didn't dance, they at least stood there, swayed back and forth. Everybody was up. Most everybody was dancing. Um, I was quite surprised. It was very infectious. Of course, it led me to dance, which is pretty easy to do. And uh, yeah, so 
Technically speaking, that was my first introduction to what was not called herd at the time, I don't think. But a very loyal fan base. Um, and that, at that time, um, a lot of this West Virginia crowd that I knew was a big, very old vein of herd that's absolutely West Virginia, absolutely Pittsburgh based, um, Western New York, all the places where Donna originally began to play. Now, of course, it's nationwide, heavily Florida influenced, right? So yeah, I guess that's the fundamental answer to that question. I could elaborate for a while. But. So I came up as a vendor for Springfest, and my very first show at Springfest that night, I actually got to get a rare treat, getting to watch the band outside the bus play for hours um, around the bus. And I just sat next to trees, some distance away, and listened to them. And I really fell in love with the dynamic of the band. And then I started meeting the people around the band. And I realized not only did I find a great band, but I found a great herd to watch them with. So I went to see them at the Orange Peel up in Asheville. And it's so funny, this is a good story. I had bought tickets online, but it's the first time I'd ever done that. And I screwed it up somehow or another. And so I didn't have a ticket and it was a sold out show. And I go up to the will call to get my ticket. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't have a ticket. Um, and so I'm like, okay, I'm determined to get in. <laughs> So I asked Tom, he kept coming back and forth and I knew he was the, I don't know, anyway, he put me on the guest list so I got in. So, and I met a whole bunch of her that night in the hotel, like I ran into Joan and David in the um, lobby and just started talking to them. I don't, you know, we got on the elevator together and pretty soon now we're fast friends, you know, so that was back a long time ago. I guess it was 2005, did I say 95? No, it was 2005. Yeah, so it was a long, I may have been to some shows before that, but that's the one where I remember meeting the herd, and then I met a whole bunch of other people, I went to a party, there was a party before one of the shows at the Orange Peel, and they posted, and I joined the list to begin with, to find out, okay, well, these are nice people, I'm going to party with them, <laughs> where are they going, <laughs> and so, um, then I went to the party out near Asheville somewhere I met a whole bunch of people there and then the next year I went to over 60 shows and I would just like I said I felt like I was flinging myself it was like stage diving only out into the herd <laughs> the first show we saw was after 9-11 that went that tour they did when um, Preston Frank was with them and the overtakers and Carol wasn't there the first time we saw them, so we thought... We thought they were a Zydeco we band. this band with this accordion player, it was like nothing we ever saw before, and we loved them. And then when we went back to see them the next time, it was not the same band. Like, wait a second, where's the uh, accordion where's the player? Accordion guy? <laughs> and he wasn't there, and it was, uh, well, it was a better band. <laughs> yeah.
shows do you go to in a year? Less than I used to, um, but I could answer that different ways, right? Now I go see Donna whenever it's convenient and at the festivals, which aren't always convenient but worth the effort to get here. Um, as, uh, as Brenda would say, more Donna for your dollar. So once you've gotten here, boom, you know. But not, not this week, but hopefully they'll make up for it tonight. But yeah, a lot less than I used to, but back in the day, we went to all the ones that were convenient and then some. So I would say almost anything that was in within five hours. And uh, in the um, 90s, there was almost a lot of that. Was, there was, they were playing the Ohio Valley four times a year, and yeah, it was easy. And Rochester was always a little bit further if you had to go. And yeah, so like maybe a bigger question is how many, and I'm gonna tell you I've lost count, and it's probably in the hundreds. In the peak in a year, sets of Dawn of the Buffalo, 30, I'll say. Quite a bit, too many. As much as I can, so within 10 hours is Trumansburg and Magfest, and uh, if I can do a six hour drive for a weekend, I'll do that, and so anything within three or 400 miles. I know a lot of people that I know in my quote unquote normal life, uh, they, they, they think we're just following a band around, we're just trying to get FaceTime with the band or something, or, or, or we're groupies, we get called groupies a lot. I don't know, probably a, a dozen at least. Well, a dozen possibly, I'll say. Sometimes if I'm lucky, you know, there'll be a two-night show and I'll go both nights at a time. But, um, and they play a lot here in North Carolina and that's about my range, you know, from Raleigh to Asheville to Charlotte. It's kind of the range I stay in, but they play a lot here. And then at the festivals, you know, they play three or four times usually. So I guess I could count those also, right? Well, I, I, I do over 20,000 miles, probably closer to 25,000 miles a year. And a lot of that's going to festivals. And I just got a, a new car in, in uh, June, June, July, August, September, October. In five months, I've put 11,000 miles on the car. And a lot of that's going to festivals. Uh, sum them up this festival season, so <laughs> it all adds up pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot, really, I guess, this year. <laughs> Elizabeth's shaking her head. Yeah, Mom. Um, this year I've probably been to, I don't know, 50. <laughs> Something like that, close, because I've been up north so much this year for reasons I won't go into right now. Um, and so a lot of the shows that were in New York State and Rhode Island once and I guess Massachusetts and Virginia and North Carolina. <laughs> so I go to a lot of shows, but not always, not always. I don't try to do the one a month uh, rule, but unless they happen to be there and I'll be there if they are. Not like I used to. The first few years, I, I, I got laid off from my job. The shop I worked in closed about 10 years ago, and for the first two or three years, I was doing 40 or 50 shows a year. But I, by myself, I got tired of traveling by myself. I, I, I don't enjoy being by myself all that much. And as nice as it's been being with the herd, you're still not by yourself, but I didn't have Van there with me either. And I, I got tired of traveling and going places without her, so now it's, well, a lot less than that. I don't know, maybe five or ten shows a year. Not enough. Not enough. Oh, I've gone out west with the band. We've been to Florida many times. Uh, a couple months ago we were in Louisiana. We've gone to Louisiana every time Don has been there. Um, it, it, as much time as we have, as much vacation time as Van can get away, that's pretty much, except for the bicycling thing in the last couple of years, that's pretty much what we've done. So what's your attraction to the herd to the band? Well, the band, the band is, <laughs> all you gotta do is hear them and you know the attraction, but on top of that, they're just super nice people, is, are the, is the herd, and they just bend over backwards to help each other out. Well, I guess, you know, the first thing is, of course, we all have, we all share the love of their music. Um, and I love to dance, and I love to dance to Donna. Some people, I'm not into the lyrics so much. Um, 
I'm just into the, when I'm dancing to Donna, I'm like the happiest. I'm just so happy. Um, and so I'm not singing usually the words, but I'm dancing and I'm usually dancing in the midst of friends and it's just and then it spreads and it's just this like collective energy it's just it's it's just it's fabulous it's, it's fabulous so it's I mean it's become it's become and I never thought this would happen because my husband at the time when he was playing Donna every day I would say can we hear something else you have 30,000 CDs can we hear something else and then he joined the herd list and um, now he's not on the herd list but I am and um, I see them more than, than he does, but uh, it's just, it's, it's beautiful, what can I say? I love the herd and, you know, we have our differences, some of us, but man, when we, it's the music that brings us together, you know, we just, we get together and have nice little gatherings like this and it's something to look forward to and something to remember. All the people that I meet, it seems like we're kind of connected in some way or another. And, um, I can't explain it, you know, that's the whole thing about being magic, you can't explain what it's all about, it's just something that happens and the whole thing is to be aware of it, what's going on. To me the amazing thing is the friends that I've made through this group, it's like, we had work friends, we have friends where we lived, we have family, we have high school friends, college friends, but it's like something really different about the friends that I, I look at it like um, an alternative sense of community, um, which I think is missing a lot in the modern society, the way we live. Uh, most of us grew up in suburbia. Um, here comes the storm. And uh, yeah, it's a missing thing, it's a missing link. And these are people of. Uh, like the music we like, and they're from all over the country, all over the world, um, and the friends will endure past the band. That's the thing, that's the idea that I know is, is real. Uh, one of these days the band is going to, something's going to happen, and, but the people we've met through uh, the band is, uh, has been just, just fabulous. Fabulous. The community, yes. Definitely the community. Yeah, it is. But I mean, you know, it's not just the community, it's the music too. The music is, when Jeb gets going on his jams, it's like, I feel like rolling my eyes up in my head and going to a different place or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really come here for the music, it's but the I really come here for the community. that knows too. how to appreciate, or the, whose brains are wired to appreciate the music the same way that you are, yeah. as we are, as you are. And who knows, maybe because our brains are wired to accept that kind of musical input, it means there's, that we have a commonality too. Maybe that's a different kind of a community and that's what helps us bond so, so strongly and so fast in this group. Yeah, and you know, it's that community, that, that the circle, kind of like you know, the dragon chasing his tail. You know? It's just to be a part of it as a fan is, is stimulating and exciting. To be a part of it as a radio guy gives me that extra added dimension. But to have friends with the band, to have friends with their community and the herd here, is priceless. So there's nothing like it. What's the, what's the herd mean to you? What are, what, are you what are your thoughts on the herd? It's a big family. See, they even get it. You could travel anywhere across the United States and stay with family, people that we've grown to love and accept into our lives, and they accept us into their lives. We, we could travel 1,500 miles up the East Coast, never stay in a hotel, and same thing, you know, when, when, when we have a, a show near our house, we open up our house and people come and stay with us. Kisakola calls us the Squirrel Network, because yeah, I guess at one point a squirrel could go from the Atlantic coast to the Mississippi River without ever touching the ground. So we're the, I guess we're the trees that all the squirrels jump to. <laughs> what, is, what is the attraction to the herd, to the band, mm -hmm. for you personally? I don't know, it's family. I mean, we're all looking for extended family and we don't have it like people used to have it. And, uh, just to walk across the meadow here and get a hug every 20, 30 steps and you know, exchange all those smiles on the dance floor. And, uh, so it just fills me up. I find that since 
not only the sense of community, but the sense of the compassion and empathy that for some reason people really give to us. I don't know if it's because we like found each other through this uh, um, through music or or if it's just the group. If it's just the particular or the people, situation I don't know what, or but it's really special. Right. It's more intense. It's more open than in any other community of people that I've ever been in, except the cancer. Well, except the other cancer parents group. That would like be about as close to, to this. But this is a lot more fun than than being with the cancer parents group. <laughs> you know, the, one of the nice things I like about the herd is it seems like the herd is always supported each other in whatever way needs to be supported by a person. I remember uh, in 2002, I quit smoking and I was still on herd list then and I said, I'm, I'm seven days everybody and I got so much good positive support through the herd uh, on doing that. My mom died. Uh, you can just feel all the all the herd vibes, as we call them, coming through. But yeah, with Gene, shoot, that was that was amazing, really. I mean, for like three days, there was nothing but uh, get well messages and that. So they really care about each other. It was like I was welcome into a family that I had hadn't even known. I didn't even know these people, and their houses were open, and their food was open, and their sites were open, and. Um, you know, they heard that I did batik, so they came over and supported me that way. But I re specifically remember that experience being like, wow. And I remember sending an email out, actually, to the herd list after that, because that's when I found out about a herd list. And, um, yeah, just really thanking everybody for being so warm and open. It was like a family. And then it was like, wow, I didn't even know I was part of this family. <laughs> I've been to a lot of concerts. Um, and I've been to them all, but it's not the same. Not the same as what? In what it, way? As, as following Donna. It's not like going to because, see a skater or Pink Floyd or something. No, so. because even though you enjoy yourself, it's not the family reunion. It's not like this. It's so much more. It's, it, 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 we're so blessed that not only do we have the music to listen to, we always have family to go back to. There's always family. hugs. People from all over that you meet up with, and, and it's it's so funny to say to people, yeah, I know someone from Kentucky. Yeah, I know someone. Yeah. Like you know someone from like every state, and it makes this world feel a little bit smaller in a way. The focus of my life. I can't, I don't really have anything bad to say. I'm plenty good to say. There's some really good people there. Well, see, I've always been resistant to being called, being a part of a herd. I, I like to think of myself as part of a clack. <laughs> so I tell people that it's real, we're just clacksters. Uh, but I'm getting used to the herd concept, although I just, I don't know. Uh, I think we're not really a herd as much as we are a family. And um, we take care of each other. We, we know each other's pretty sides and we know which part stinks. We still like each other, love each other. Some best, my best friends in the world are my daughters who are here and my, my friends who appreciate the honor of the buffalo as much as I do. Yeah, it's nice to um, have a crew that I can land into and have a good time with and hang out. And they're just so special, very special people. I'm very lucky, we're lucky. The herd is a completely self-organized group of folks that developed entirely separate from us. You know, they follow us to a lot of our gigs. They come, we'll show up at gigs, they'll cook for us. It really is just a total blessing to be a part of. I yeah. mean, a total blessing. There are people that really love what we talk about. They love our, the rhythm of our music, the color of our music. Um, it's awakened a certain part of their individual um, journey in their own lives. With us, it's always been about that vibe and that feeling and finding that moment. When the thing really comes alive, it's like everybody showed up for the same reason. It becomes a life of its own. And I think that's also why our fans have, have loved us because they, 
they feel that same thing and they really listen to the words, they're into the message, they're like right there.